Congressman Blake Moore. He represents northern Utah and eastern Idaho. He is a tenacious uh, individual. He's a hard worker. Uh, he's a very close friend, and he's really smart. He's a former Foreign Service Officer for the U.S. Department of State, and now he works in Washington, D.C., representing us, trying to protect our liberties. Uh, he's married to Jane. Uh, they have three boys, but one on the way. He's, be, you know, he, back in Utah, he's doing very well. But he says his most prized title is a Little League coach. So if you would welcome, uh, join me in welcoming Congressman Blake Moore. And I think he's coming virtually. He's working hard in Washington, D.C. So if we can bring him out of the Zoom room, be, let's welcome him here. You know, that's a great entrance right up on the screen, Congressman. Well, I'm glad I don't have to see it, and only you have to see it. Uh, if, I'm, if, I'm too, if I'm too large on the screen, I'll put you all through that. Uh, you can hear me okay, President? We can hear you loud and clear. Excellent. Well, I think you just highlighted the, the actual job that I, that I do. You get to, you know, you, you said you, you had the honor to do what you just did, which, you know, that's debatable. But I'm stuck here in D.C., in the swamp, as some people call it. And I get to miss you going off of a high jump. Um, so this is uh, definitely not, I did not win out on this one. I would have been there if I could have actually seen that. That would have been a highlight for me. Uh, but a real highlight was um, I just spoke with 20, 30 uh, uh, students from the close up program from Cache Valley. Some Cache County um, school kids came out here with their educators. And I think we're doing a little bit of Q&A and I can already assure you that the, the questions that I got peppered to me early this morning by these, by these young minds were, were probably more, more pressing than anything that I'm gonna get today. Those are the really, really amazing parts about this job, the redeeming factors of this job when you get to interact with those, with, with that group. Close Up's a cool program. Uh, we engage in it a lot in Utah and uh, I was excited to be able to do that this morning. So, Equally so excited to be all with you all today. I, my staff, my team and I, we worked on a lot of talking points for this talk, and they're all related to federalism and the 10th Amendment. So, I'm going to so, go off script here a little bit and just try to bucket it in three big phases of what that means to me. And um, I, as I thought about the importance of federalism and the 10th Amendment, my predecessor, Congressman Rob Bishop, uh, spoke, speaks, speaks about this with, 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 with real historical perspective with um, a lot of credibility. And um, I've had the opportunity to hear from him several times on, the, on this topic. And, and as I've sort of you know, jumped into this, this experience, I, I entered the race very late. This wasn't something that I was plotting out and um, was fortunate to be able to serve in this role. I, I think about where I'm at with, with this topic. And, I, and I, like I mentioned, I put it into three big categories. One, first was the campaign. We were right in the middle of a pandemic. And as I was talking to delegates in Utah, we have a convention system as a, as a key part of our election system, of our, of our primary, primary system. And, and this, this, this came up more than, than ever. And, that's show, that, and that shows you how you know, that group of people is really focused on this and how important it is. And the part that I just continued to highlight was this is an opportunity. This pandemic is miserable. Everything about it is, is horrible. But this gives us an opportunity to be able to show how important it is for states and local communities to be able to make some of the most important decisions in our nation. And it highlighted that. The federal government was giving guidelines, giving some expectations, and providing information. And you can argue to, the, to, what, how, to how well we've even been able to do that, right? I, 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 I remember kind of watching and I would immediately look to what our state leaders were doing. So Congressman Moore, let me ask you a question that relates to that. Uh, there's a temptation among in Washington, D.C., and I know you've only been there a short time, but it seems like uh, those in Washington, D.C. want to solve every issue. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you uh, evaluate that, that, whether that deserves federal response or whether you think, what do you think the states ought to be responding to? and What's the role of the federal government? The role of the federal government is first to listen. They listen a lot more than they do, and um, we we uh, I think over the last little while we've seen it play out both ways. And the times where we are allowing for states to have the autonomy to be able to make decisions based on their own circumstances, 
we've seen success. And I think that we need to be able to highlight that a lot more than we're doing. But that was what I loved about the campaign portion of this. Because then Janet jumped in as I got into office, then it jumped into sort of my, my, my first, few, first few months. And I swear all I did was spend time talking about what Utah does. I had the distinct honor of working closely with Dan Jones, the late Dan Jones before he passed, uh, working in um, some of the polling work that he did. It was part of the, the, the company, the, the consulting firm that I worked for the last seven years prior to this job. This, this new role of mine. And, and we have tons of historical data that shows when you pull the same people, how do you feel like our state, what direction is our state on? Overwhelmingly supportive of, we're going in the right direction. Overwhelmingly not supportive of and communicating that we're at the federal level, we're not going in the right direction. And then I think that's probably very similar to many states out there. And so uh, enabling, allowing, and giving the autonomy for states to be able to do it. But I spent the first several months bragging about the way we do everything, the way we run our economy, Utah. And I know this isn't just a Utah centric event, but you know, we're, we're there in Utah. So let's, uh, let's, let's highlight it. The way that uh, our- Go economy, ahead, it sounds good to me. <laughs> our economy, the philanthropic nature that we, that we do. It's, you know, to, to have that best economy, most philanthropic state, we run our election systems in a very, very inclusive way that grows the number of people that participate, but we do it securely. I get, the list goes on and on, and those were all key topics that I was, I was dealing with in the first few months. And then now, as I've gotten, as we've, as we've settled in and we've been able to have some time to get through some of our legislation for the committee, the, the legislation that we're proposing does just this. Two, two, that I can, two that I'll highlight, fire sheds and Bear River Heritage um, area. Those have an enormous amount of local input. Those have, uh, you know, um, the, the key parts of that legislation allows for the, the state level, local level to be able to influence and work more collaboratively with our federal agencies uh, to come up with better outcomes. And so it's a key kind of piece. And, and I've spent the last six months as we, as we get legislation put in front of us to oppose or to propose based off of the importance of federalism in the 10th Amendment. And, and, and I think we use that as a framework on how we go about every decision that we do. Let me pause there. That's, that's, that, that, that's great to hear. So are there, tell me more of the efforts that are being taken uh, in Washington, D.C. To, to restore states' rights. You know, Alec is, uh, believes in federalism, states' rights. Anything there you'd like to share with me that we can do or you're doing to try to, to help us have uh, the, what we think is the, our, our responsibility to take care of the th things we need to to govern? Yeah, I guess I'll, what I'll do is kind of continue on with what I was just mentioning with the oppose and propose frameworks. Uh, we've, there's, there's several things that we've, we've, we've opposed, right? HR1, um, that's gonna federalize elections. That's going to take away the Thank ability- Thank you for that, by the way. Do that at the local level, county specific. And I couple it though, always with, to every single state, red or blue state, any colleague that I have back here, look how Utah's doing it. Like, look at the way we've embraced certain things and, and we can do this in a secure manner. Uh, blue, blue, new, blue New Deal, Green New Deal, those types of things. Like, what has Utah done to invest in cleaner energy, cleaner technology? Like, the U.S., we're, 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 we're on the right trajectory with respect to how we approach this without putting the costs on the backs of every single middle class person in our country um, and, and doing it better than other, uh, other nations. And we need to be able to promote and support that. So there's lots of times, because I'm on natural resources, so there's all sorts of energy policies that, that, that don't make sense and then aren't gonna have the right outcomes. But when we allow for local level, state level influence here, you're able to, to get, I mean, Utah, <laughs> we live and work in, in our areas and we want the most beautiful landscapes. Utah respects that more than any person in any bureaucratic situation back here in Washington more, uh, we, we respect that more in Utah, and we will work to do the right things to make sure that, 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 that that's accomplished. Um, and then again, I'll, I'll mention the Fire Sheds Act. I think that's the one where I, I'm the most excited about. Uh, I did a whole bunch of town halls, um, I had listening sessions, round tables, whatever you want to call them, with experts in um, wildfire and multiple other topics. And through that, we learned how, how successful the Good Neighbor Authority and shared stewardship are, those, those agreements that we can enter into, we as the state can enter into with federal agencies, work collaboratively to, to produce the best outcomes. 
they've been a success. And this legislation will make that easier for states to continue to be able to embrace that type of um, collaborative work. So I'll pause there. So, so I have two more questions and they're my favorite two, but I'm gonna ask them together because in the interest of time, and I think you can answer them together. How have you worked to facilitate a relationship with local leaders in your district? I love that one, you know that. And what have you learned from your local, local leaders? So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I just answered the question. And, you know, this is the part that I'm supposed to praise. I have it written down here. He, it was sent over earlier about our, our, our leadership in the habit from, from Speaker Wilson to President Adams. And we have a long list of things, how handsome they are, how, 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 how productive they are, all that kind keep, of stuff. Keep I'll going, keep going. That, read right? the, I want you to read the entire list. <laughs> yeah, their office has sent it over. Um, I started with folks at the federal level need to listen more. Uh, I don't, I didn't come back here with all the answers, but just like that concept of doing, and I'll say the names of the real people doing the job from Brian Steed to Reg Johnson to, to Gordon Larson, folks on the governor's team even. I talk a lot about the legislature, the folks on the governor's team too. Like they, they, they gave an incredible amount of information that led into our legislation on fire sheds, right? Um, we see how our le state legislature handles um, our, our surplus in a rainy day fund. Like what I wouldn't give at the federal level to be in that situation. And that's because of the good work that our, our state legislature has been able to, to, to do over time. So as I, I, I'm joining every single bipartisan group I can, from problem solvers, I'm on the debt and deficit group, to 30 for 30, that's a group of 30 Republicans, 30 Democrats that care deeply about our debt and deficit. Uh, several of these types of groups that are, that are there, I'm going to leverage my relationships with local state legislators and, and determine how we go about managing uh, our budget and getting us to a point where the, Fed, where, where the US citizens can trust us again. We have to get our debt to GDP ratios back in, back in, the, in, in the opposite direction that they're going now in order for us people to have confidence in us. And, and that's something that I'll definitely look to our state leaders for as well. Well, thank you again for your service. It's sure great to have you with us and uh, appreciate you taking the time. I know you're working hard, you're in session. Thank you, thank you again. Uh, really congressman good. Moore, my, my favorite congressman, he is my congressman. Thank you for being with us today. You're and, my favorite state Senate president. Thank you. <laughs>